Welcome to Courage Talks and welcome to Courage TV. It's your boy Joshua and I am back. Uh, we are back today with a very, very special person. We're going to be speaking about a very, very important and very um, relevant topic, especially during this pandemic. So we'll be talking about why is it important to protect your mental health, especially I mean, of course, it's important to protect your mental health during all times, but especially in this pandemic, um, I believe that um, mental health is so, so, so important. So it was only um, good and nice that we get uh, a psychotherapist and her name is Erin. Erin, welcome to Courage Talks, Courage TV. Thank you so much, Erin, for being on the show. Thank you so much for um, about for what you're going to share with us after this. So, Erin, maybe you want to just share about yourself a little bit so that, so that our audience and our viewers will know a little bit about you. All right. Thank you so much, Joshua, for the nice introduction of myself. <laughs> oh, no. So... I would uh, hi everyone. My name is Erin. So I am a co-founder of the Empowerment Group, of that provides uh, mental health services, mm. including therapy and also set, uh, workshops and set, seminars. And then I'm also a therapist at Humankind, uh, Humankind Community Counseling, and at the same time also doing part time as a research fellow at Thrive Well Malaysia. Mm. So, yeah, as, as a graduate from Master of Professional Counseling, I am a, I am a level two member of the Australian Council, Counseling Association and also the Indonesian Association of Guidance Counseling. Yeah, so I think maybe to give a little bit of background about my work in terms of in the field of mental health, I have been, I would say that I, I'm more... Uh, intense in the mental health work ever since I I was in Malaysia. Mm. Yeah. So I I was an intern counselor at Taylor's University. And mm. then I was also involved in the resilient refugee intervention that was developed by Help University and Maryland University uh, in the US. Yeah. And then I would say my involvement my personal involvement in humankind has started, I think, like last year when I started to be the volunteer from this, for the same work uh, mm. therapy that they provide for children. And then after that, uh, they are creating this body bear child line for uh, children who are experiencing emotional distress in wow. Malaysia. So I was involved as the PFA provider or psychological first aid provider and also uh, for a for a for a while I was the capacity building and training coordinator as well yeah okay and currently I am a, an active integrative adapt therapist um, developed by the global health connect and UNSCR uh, that provides psychosocial um, psychosocial support, I would say, for refugees in Malaysia. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah. so you are based in Indonesia and you yes. are involved with refugees in Malaysia. Yes, yes. Um, so I would say that I'm, most of my work are actually in Malaysia. Because wow. I've been, yeah, more building network in Malaysia okay. compared to the Indonesia. Yeah. Nice, nice. So, so how, how do you do your work? Like, it's all on Zoom, lah, I presume, right? Yes, yes. It's all on Zoom. And then, uh, you know, it's Google Meet, Zoom. It's just back and forth, Google Meet and Zoom. I see. Even uh, when seeing clients also, like, I'm using Zoom. Maybe. Yeah, mostly, mostly, yeah. Zoom and Google Meet. Okay. All right. 
All right, Erin, thank you so much for that. Um, thank you for sharing about yourself, uh, that, that very nice introduction. Mm. So let's let's get straight into it, Erin. Um, mm. Erin, the biggest question of the day, what is mental health? Yeah, what is mental health? You see, I think I never know that mental health existed until I was exploring options to mm. study psychology. Okay. You know, I guess to some extent it, it has like, it existed in everyone's life. Mm. It existed in our life that mental health is about the state of well-being, you know, but it never occurred to us that, oh, this, is what defined as mental health. Mm. Even child knows that they are not feeling okay. Even child knows when they feel okay or not okay, right? So that is the state of mental health, I would mm. say. Mental health, I would probably quote the, the definition by uh, WHO, the World Health Organization is a state of well-being when we are able and capable to carry out our duty, our responsibility, our um, daily life task. Or I would say summarize it into our functioning. Mm. When we're able to function emotionally, cognitively, psychologically, and Mm. socially, in our daily life. So mm. that is what I would say, the state of well-being. Um, something that is interesting that I want to add is actually just mental health is not only the absence of mental illnesses or mental mm. disorder or mental health conditions. You see, people can be without any diagnosis of mental health disorder but they may be not able to carry out the task. Their state of well-being may not be well enough to to, um, function in their daily life. So I would Mm -hmm. say that the the key things is to function in their daily life. Yeah. So if if I may, Erin, Good mental health basically is when you are functioning and and um you're basically in your purpose lah. What you've been mm. called to do, um, you are functioning well, right? When yes, when you're functioning well, mm. that also I mean like uh, uh, something that I would like to add on is when you're functioning well, you are able to cope with daily stresses you know, the, the mm-hmm. common daily stresses. You are not overwhelmed by it. Or even if you are overwhelmed by it, you're able to adapt and cope with that. That is the mental health. Okay. Wow. That is interesting because I always thought mental health was just uh, the absence of, let's say, not having depression or anxiety. But um, to actually... Um, have a healthy mental state of mind, right? Is actually yeah. uh, functioning well at your job or at your tasks, responsibilities, mm-hmm. things like that, Erin? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And, and, and manage your stresses, basically, you know, because okay. every day there will be stresses, right? And yes. when you're able to manage and carry out your tasks, I would say that is the mental the state of mental well-being. Wow. Okay. Um, what is the significance or what is the importance of uh, having this well-balanced uh, state of mind, mental health, basically, good mental mm. health? Yeah. Mm. I would say that um, mental health and physical health is equally important. Yeah. The reason I'm saying this is because our mental health and physical health, to some extent, are correlated. 
Mm. You know, when you are not feeling you have you ever experienced Joshua when you are when you are physically not well, how yeah. does that make you feel? I feel like down and then I don't want to do anything and like just want to sleep or something like that now. Yeah. Right? And then when 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 you have to deal with the daily stresses of of work for example, you know, when you try to put yourself in at work, mm. forcing yourself at work. Will that make you feel good? Definitely not. Yes, exactly. So yeah. that is why I said it's to some extent related mm. and it's equally important. So if I can say maybe as a metaphor, you know, the our body, our physical body is the vehicle, but the mental health is the fuel that drive you to carry out your life. Wow. That is yeah. very profound, Erin. That is very profound. So which means to say basically if I am good on the inside, mm. I can function well on the outside, right? Yes. And vice versa, when you are feeling good, you are able to do things, you are able to do more things. When you are mm. not feeling mm. when you are not emotionally feeling good, when you mm. are Just as an example, when you are um, sad after a heartbreak, do you think you're able to to make a big decision? Do you think mm. you're able to think clearly? Mm, definitely May not. not. Yeah. So exactly. So our mental health, our state of well-being, is really important in terms of our daily functioning. And also in terms of our uh, decision making, in terms of how we act, in terms of how we perceive things, how we respond to a situation, and how we manage our current situation. Mm. Wow, that is that is amazing, Erin. So also, just I just want to ask you, Erin. So hmm. let's say now. If I'm physically affected, or so let's say I'm not feeling well, um, mm. just maybe for a week, I'm a well-functioning person because I've experienced this before. I mean, like well, very mm. I like to move around, and the minute something happens to me, right, automatically my let's say my physical body is affected. Let's say I have an mm. injury or something like that, and it takes me out for a week, just a week. I feel like. My whole mental state, right, just goes down. Like I become very sad. Mm. Like I'll be like so demotivated, and I'm like, um, when is this thing gonna end? When is this gonna go away? Because yeah. I cannot function like normal. So mm. in that way, so your physical, your mental health can be affected by uh, when your physical body is not doing well. Also, right? If I understand yes. correctly. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. I mean, like. You are not able to some extent. Your your capability is uh, limited at that time. Mm. Right? So that makes you not feeling good about yourself. That makes you feel I'm restricted. You know, I, I'm I'm not able to do things the way that I used to. I'm not able to do things that the 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 way that. You used to be so free, so active, right? Yes, so, yes. Yeah, in that sense, yeah. Wow, this is this is honestly giving me, um, uh, like fresh understanding because I always viewed it the other way only. That means only if you're good inside, then you can function outside. Now I'm starting to realize if things are starting to click when the times <laughs> when my physical body, my I mean mental health is good, you know. But hmm. my physical body is affected, and because my physical body is affected, it's affected my mental health. Yeah. 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 Wow. That's that's amazing. Okay. It's like a light bulb moment, lah. <laughs> I think. Yes, and and you see, yeah. Hmm. Even how we feel hmm. also gonna affect our social skill, our interpersonal relationship. Wow. When you are not feeling good, when you are like uh, mentally exhausted, 
do you how would you react to your family members some people can be quite irritable because they are so stressed that they they just become irritable easily irritable to to other people around them you know so it to some extent it also affects the the, the social uh, the interpersonal relationship that we have with other people so hence i cannot i cannot emphasize enough on the importance of mental health because literally it affects every aspect of our life mm. it okay. affects our social it affects our physical it affects our functional like individual functional personal function okay yeah. okay wow thanks sharing that there was good stuff yeah learning something all the time <laughs> crazy okay um erin what are the factors that can affect someone's mental health mm. i think uh, there are so so many things yep. first is what you say you know physical health definitely mm. yep. something that is impacting us you know when someone is being especially especially for someone who is um, being diagnosed with certain illnesses that is uh, maybe incurable or maybe it affects their um, long uh, their 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 long life you know like for example like diabetes or chronic pain that definitely affects their mental health right mm. because you constantly have to to be in pain you have to constantly watch your uh, physical state another thing is the biological factors like genetics uh i think there are several studies that shows actually like several uh, some mental health conditions such as like depression or schizophrenia it can be genetic can be due to genetic but that does not guarantee that mental health uh the 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 it, it does not guarantee that they will develop depression or schizophrenia mm. you know that depends on uh, other factors as well vice versa people who are not may not have the genetic or their parents may or, or uh, their ancestors may not have history of depression and schizophrenia they also able and and might have the chances of developing depression and schizophrenia so genetic is one thing but that is not a guarantee mm. um another thing is the use of alcohol and substances alcohol and substances might interfere with our um brain in that sense um okay. yeah so it may impact what what i learned is is the alcohol is actually the the uh what they call it mood amplifier you know mm. if you're feeling happy you become more happy <laughs> but if you're feeling sad you drink in a short period of time you might feel happy but yeah. it just last for a short moment after that it's just going to amplify the sadness or the unhappy emotions that you have mm. so and there is a risk also for alcohol and substances because you know as you drink more you 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 consume more you have this then uh you develop the tolerance right i see and there are risk of dependency on it so th- definitely it's gonna affect how you look at yourself how you perceive yourself and how you perceive your life if you are unable to cope with the daily stresses and you run for i mean like you turn to alcohol mm. yes in the short term it helps probably for a few times it helps 
But then when you look at yourself, how do you feel? May not necessarily be good because you kind of like have to rely on alcohol to cope with stressors, to cope with your situation. And to some extent, it might change your perspective that, oh, I'm actually not capable of coping, mm. you know? So that is the, the, the very danger of alcohol and substances and how it may affect the mental health. There are also um, risk of um, drug-induced psychosis. So if it's taken for uh, excessive amount, mm. several drugs might induce psychosis, might induce hallucination and delusional. Yeah. So it's also something that needs to be, uh, we need to be aware of in terms of alcohol and substances and its relation to mental health. Um, okay. Yes. Oh, so I mean, basically, uh, just touching on the topic of alcohol and drugs mm-hmm. and all that. So, it starts off as you can say, like a solution. Uh, basically, someone you're facing like a bad day at work. Let's say, for example, you cannot deal with those stresses there, so you mm-hmm. decide to go out and have a few drinks. Um. So once you do that, and you make that into a habit. That's when you develop a tolerance, right? Yes. So once you develop a tolerance, you need more alcohol. So when you need more alcohol, at the end of the day, you don't really address the the, the problem, but you're just piling up on your issues, right? Hmm. You are just avoiding, basically. You are avoiding. And with that, that alcohol and drugs is basically just helping you to deal with your momentary emotional responses it doesn't address the 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 issue that you actually have the stressors that you actually have yeah and the effect of it on the brain is very i would say something that you really need to think twice before using alcohol and substances or okay. consuming it yeah um i think On that note, also, I would like to add lifestyle. Lifestyle is very uh, significant mm. in terms of our mental health, you know, like work conditions, um, to some extent, our work stress might interfere with our mental health. Um, you know, because we are nowadays, we are living in a, in a fast-paced Everything must be fast-paced. There are a lot mm. of competition at work, right? So it does affect our mental health. Um, also, I would say that another thing that I want to emphasize is our life experiences. You see that we are, as human, we accumulate experiences throughout our life, right? So... There are some pleasant and unpleasant experiences that we encounter. Many are not aware how much the unpleasant experiences that they have or they encounter impacted the mental health, mm. impacted how they feel about themselves, impacted how they see themselves and other people. So it really is important. Yes, I would say that you only see right now, you only see the what has been manifested. Mm. Right now you see the symptoms, you see the behavior, right? You see the behavior of crying spells, you see the behavior of, of becoming aggressive, you know. But yes, that is the behavior. We the the root of the cause sometimes it's more than that what makes them becoming aggressive that's what we need to look at you know mm. so our 
our uh, mental health is very much affected by our experiences. Wow. Wow. Oh, that is, oh, that's deep. Very, that's, that's amazing. Yeah, that's, you're, you're so right. A lot of, yeah. um, especially childhood experiences, right? It kind exactly. of links up to the choices that you make as teenagers. And then, and, and after that, as adults, everything is connected, right, Erin? Just yeah. from, you know, yeah, just from simple, simple things that, let's like, say, neglect from parents mm. when you're growing up, that can really affect a lot of things right later on. Stuff yeah. like that. Yeah. See. Yeah. Just, uh, I mean, like, um, neglect by parents, for example, like you say, you know, it's going to affect how you relate to your significant others later on. How you look at other people, mm. will you be able to trust them? Will you be able to trust your friends? Sometimes when, especially when it, when it coming from, uh, when, when those experiences coming from family, it makes us think that, you know, my family members can do that to me. What about other people? They are the closest people in our surroundings can do that to me. How can other people? They are more than capable of doing that based on this person's perspective. So really experiences has very significant impact. Mm. Childhood, teenagers, when they're developing their identity, when they try to figure out who they are as a person, there's so much happening with their childhood experiences. Okay. Because you are looking at what has, what have I gone through? What has I, whether I have kind of like uh, able to manage those situations in the child, during the childhood time. Mm. Okay, yeah. okay. Erin, um, just, just mm. taking on from the factors, so now mm. I want to bring the pandemic in. Mm. Okay, how has this pandemic affected mental health in your view, la, your experience? Mm. Many things, actually. <laughs> there are lots of fear worry, concern about the COVID situation. Yeah, yeah. About them being affected, mm. about, uh, sorry, about them being infected, about mm. their family members being infected. One thing. Second thing is some people, especially who uh, unfortunately lost their family members due to COVID, you know, they are, they are also experiencing grief Mm. Of, of, uh, from losing of their, their family members right? and then uh, with all these social restrictions, MCO that is being implemented in Malaysia being separated from, from their family you know because many international students are coming to Malaysia many uh, people from different parts of Malaysia also going to another part part of Malaysia for yeah. work, for, for schools, you know. So they are being, to some extent, kind of like separated because they, are, can, they do not have the freedom mm. to go back to their home, to go back to their uh, the, the, the hometown, you know. So it's, it's the separation, the loss of freedom there, being, having to sit at home, also bring a lot of uh, uh, boredom, you know. I think it has been, if I'm not mistaken, it's almost like a year and a half mm. for Malaysia to, to be uh, under MCO, right? So it's, it's really is uh, not an easy thing for them to deal with being at home for a year and a half. Many people are used to travel and now they can't. Many people used to do things, they can't have access to that anymore. Mm. 
social uh say social relationship so uh in terms of your friendship in terms of your um relationship also has been affected because of this um social restrictions that is being implemented right you cannot see your friends uh, many students are not able to see their friends you know so there are a lot of uh, uncertainty I'll say a lot of fear a lot of uncertainty a lot of uh, stresses that they have to to deal with yeah and i think to some extent this pandemic has has affected quality of life Mm. No. Um I think we hear uh, some people or maybe more than some are being fired from the job getting um losing their job mm. uh, because of the economic of uh, the companies being uh having their salary to to be reduced a lot of stress you know, associated with like how they can ma- maintain their quality of life You know, so there are a lot of changes I'll say that um, happening right now in terms of our life, which is being disrupted by the COVID, and that creates a lot of uncertainty, anxiety, fear, worry, many things, anger, disappointment as well. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um Erin what what do you think are people mm-hmm. struggling with the most this pandemic? Mm, I would say that based on a few uh, research and surveys that has been done especially in Malaysia mm. I would say many are uh, experiencing depressive symptoms you know anxiety Uh, suicidality is also quite um, emotional distress is also another thing. So um, maybe I would like to share with you a little bit uh, what I found that um, by MMHA, the Malaysian I think, Mental Health Association, if I'm not mistaken, uh, there is twofold increase in people seeking help. at the year of 2020 compared to the number of of people seeking help in 2019 so oh. it's like almost double okay another thing is befrienders i think um they reported one in three calls actually is reporting suicidality Wow. In the year of 2020 compared to in 2018 wow. when it's one in 10 calls. So it's like almost triple. Mm. You know. And another thing that I found is by the government psychosocial hotline, uh the Malaysian government so- psychosocial hotline say uh reported that from April to September 2020 There is thirty thousand, thirty-seven thousand calls, and half is reported due to emotional distress. Wow! So many. I would say the most frequent one, or uh, the most intense one, is I would say the depressive symptom, anxiety, uh, suicidality, and emotional mm. distress. but uh to give probably more situation to it right i guess uh i mean like, i think there are many factors contributing to it you know as i mentioned there are job loss uh, for maybe to categorize it like for children and teenagers you know their school their school is being closed they can't uh their changes in terms of academic activities they have to adapt to online learning you know and then for university students some some of them reported that they are un- uncertain what will they do 
whether they will be able to complete their uh, program or course on time because of this COVID, especially international students, mm. right? And then being restricted at home, you know, especially those um, teenagers uh, who may not necessarily have a good relationship with parents, you know, they kind of like have to be forced to, to stay at home and face uh, mm. being, being in the same house uh, with their parents, you know. So to some extent, they might kind of like isolate themselves, you know, to avoid um, re- interaction if they don't have a good relationship with the family members, you know. And then they can't see their friends. Friendship at that age, at the teenager, at childhood, it's very much important for them. Yes. But now they can't see them anymore. Correct. You know, so that 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 creates a lot of loneliness, feeling of mm-hmm. loneliness. Yeah. But for okay. working adult, it's also the same thing. I mean, like there are a lot of stresses. You know, adjusting to new working to new working mode of like working from home. Not many of us are really used to it, right? And then adapting to technologies, especially for on older, um, you know, like the older people. Mm. Some of them who are still working, they have to to adapt to learn the technology. That can be quite hard for them to adapt. Mm. To adjust, you know, struggling to maintain work-life balance. This is the one of the the thing that I've seen more frequently. Is it working from home? Your professional life and personal life is just one door away. It's only a few steps away, right? We might think like, okay, uh, okay lah, just do one one more hour lah, one more hour. One more task, one more task. But sometimes they just lost that balance. You mm. know, accumulatively they lost that balance. Accumulatively, they, they their life has become unbalanced between work and personal life, and that can be dangerous because they do not have the time for their own, uh, for them for themselves. Yeah, and it may lead to burnout. Okay. Yeah. Erin, how how about like? Uh, sorry, sorry to interject. Mm-hmm. Um, how about like working adults that want to have um a balanced life, but because their companies mm-hmm. are like putting pressure. Okay, you because um I've spoken to a few of my friends like they really want mm-hmm. like like some me time and you know they want to do other things, but because of pressure. Constantly need to work, and then you know another thing I want to bring in is like frontliners. Frontliners got no choice; True. they are True. working constantly. You know, mm. um, and mm. like some of them who are working from home, who mm. where the the companies pile up even more work because mm. you're working from home, so your employee is not really given a chance. So, what right. would your advice be, Erin, for people who are in that category? Okay, I think one advice that I uh, always encourage to everyone, to even to my client, is to listen to themselves. Listen to whether or not they are still capable or still able to do it at that time. Are they able to endure more work? Are they able to do that for another? few hours if they are not if they have experienced the mental and emotional exhaustion from work listen to themselves Mm. another thing that I would like to encourage is to prioritize give priority, priority to your task which one are more priority you know, to some extent, it's more like sorting out which one that you need to do first, 
which one that can be done in the next day, possibly. So you can focus on the tasks that are given and needs to be done immediately. And then you can rest and continue on the, I would say, the, the less priority work on the next day. Manage the time. Manage your own time. Knowing when is your limit. Knowing when is your emotional and mental limit. I think that is the most important thing. Okay. Listen to yourself for that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just good advice. I think it's like the that song lah. Listen to your heart. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. This is a very old song. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. Um, my music I days are like old school. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. Anything else, Eddie, to the question or? Um, I think for the frontliners, really to reach out for help if they. Feel that they are not able to cope with it anymore. Mm. You know, um, it has been a long, long battle for them. Uh, try to to uh, try to prioritize the time when you have the time for when they have the time for their own. Maybe they can do more of like a self uh, self care practices for them. To take care of themselves emotionally, physically, you know, and to replenish that because I get, I mean, like for for, I get that uh, for frontliners they are not they are not much of a choice, right? Everything is important for them. Yes. So when they get the time, just recharge, replenish their uh, energy, that replenish their their emotional and mental. Uh, well-being to before they they work on on uh, the next day. You know. But for people who work in the company, try to as much as possible prioritize the work. I think, and then after that, listen to what extent can you do more. You know, sometimes we think that we able to do more and more and more and more until we lose that balance, and then. We experience burnout, so just listen to ourselves. Yeah. Okay. All right, I think that's um that's really good um very good advice. Um, Erin, how about um how do we identify if um someone is facing mental health? How can we identify? Hmm. This is a very good question because you see, mental struggles is not something that we can see. You know, emotional struggles, mental struggle is not something that we can see from the outside, right? We won't know that pe- people who just walk past us is someone who is experiencing depression, who probably recovering from anxiety. We don't know. So unless they, they tell you, then we will be able to. So like one thing is mental health or mental uh, tiredness or exhaustion is not something that we can see from the outside. To continuing from that, in my work, in my line of work as a therapist, psychotherapist, what we do is we encourage the client to explore their challenges and try to understand from their perspective what are their struggles and what makes them struggling at this situation. Yeah. At the same time, we might able to help them to express their bottled up feelings, you know, something that they may not be able to express, yeah. or their 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 thoughts that are hit that they are not comfortable to to share with other people, you know. So it's more like a creating a safe space for them to open up and explore their issues, and 
to to work with them in in restoring and rebuilding themselves. Mm. So that is my line of work. However, in terms of mental illnesses that you mentioned, in I would like to tell you that my line of work as a therapist, we are not qualified to diagnose. We are not qualified to uh, label any mental uh, condition, mental health conditions. But okay. we do have a point of reference. We might take note of what would be the some of the things that are significant for them. That is significant changes in their life. Just as a point of reference for us to help them better, not to diagnose. So it's just as oh, okay, I think this person might be uh, have some symptoms of this so we can uh, we can try what is the best way to deal with mental this kind of mental health then we bring it to the session that is uh, in our line of job uh, as a psychotherapist but um, in the mental health field in general psycho clinical psychologists and psychiatrists are the ones who able who able to to diagnose those mm. um, mental illnesses yeah and they have they they are qualified and they have learned on diagnosing those uh, mental illnesses okay okay um Erin, mm. let's say la let's say um how would i know that i need professional help Because why I'm asking this, a lot of people, uh, sometimes they, they are not able to tell whether they have they are anxious or is it depression or am I just not having a good day? You know, sometimes it's hard to know whether I need professional help, you know. So what would, would your opinion be, um, Erin? How can I tell that I need professional help? Okay, um, there are so many signs actually that sometimes we overlook in in our uh, daily life. Yeah. So, um, but one thing and the most important thing that I want to bring up is when you have the when you have the thought that life is not worth living. Mm. This is a red flag that you really need to look for professional help. Yeah. Second is when you experience intense and prolonged emotions toward yourself or others that that to some extent is kind of like paralyzing you, that makes you overwhelmed to, to manage your daily life, to manage your situation, to manage your own emotions. You know, so For example, it is like maybe a prolonged, prolonged sadness, prolonged grief, you know, irritability, extreme fears, fluctuation in mood. You know, you can be happy, the next second you become very, very sad, and then the next second you become very, very happy again. This is a sign that you need help. Mm. Yeah. And then when you notice that the feelings or the thoughts that you have in you have disabled you from performing your daily task or to carrying out your daily activity. Yeah, this is what I would say, like, uh, more like interfere with your functioning. Mm. So when uh, uh, when this happens, it can be in, in, in form of losing interest in your daily life, in your daily activity, or losing interest in, in things that you used to enjoy, that is a sign. And also not wanting to not wanting to to uh, be present in the social activities. Okay. In other words, you're isolating yourself. 
you withdrawing yourself from social events, from the social, uh, from your social life. Basically, you are withdrawing. This is also a, a sign that you have to look out for. And when you experience difficulty in managing or coping or adapting with a major life event, I think nowadays in this COVID situation, there are so many uh, things that has changed, right? Um, like change of career, you know, because of the circumstances, um, losing a family member, or maybe your family members being uh, affected that with uh, health conditions, physical health conditions, you know, it's a major thing in your life. And if you are not able to ad- adapt to that situation, if you really ex- struggling to 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 uh, to manage that, to to ad- adapt in that circumstances, it's a sign that you need to look for uh, help. Um, when you when your way of adapting is unhealthy, for example, is turning in turning to alcohol, you know, or self harming yourself. It can be in many forms, but when you know that you are not ad- adapting with the situation in a healthy manner, mm. that is a sign that you need some kind of support to help you adapt in a more adaptive and healthy way. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, what, it's, it's something, this is going to be something that is more general. Mm. Maybe like like um, when you want to improve your current situation, but you're not sure what to do. Something that also can be uh, explored in the in the therapy that you might need uh, the the insights from a professional on helping you to take a look at your life in a different perspective. Mm. Yeah. Um, or maybe it's just about improving your relationship with your family members, with your friends, with your partner, with your significant other. You know, but you can't because of the past experiences that you might have with them. Okay. You know, there are grievances that you still carrying inside of you towards them. Mm. Something that also you might want to to uh, need some kind of support, look for help with that. Um, this is something that is, um, I would say, very significant thing, which is when you start to notice something unusual from yourself, such as hearing voices inside your head, mm. hallucinations, delusions, this is a sign that you really need, I'll say, another red flag that you really need help, uh, mental health help. Um, you know, I, um, obsession towards cleanliness, hygiene. Mm. Nowadays, it's become something that is kind of like normalized because in this pandemic, it's something that is happening and we need to take care of ourselves through those uh, 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 cleanliness, hygiene, right? But then if it's become very excessive, then it also might be something that you want to, uh, to, to get some kind of support for. Mm. Wow. So many things, yeah. Crazy. That, 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 that. Thank you. I think from a, yeah, yeah. Quite I a think bit. from a simple thing, from a simple thing, from yourself, just notice mm. if you are unable to cope. Basically, when you are unable to cope, when you 
notice something unusual, I would say, to, to summarize the whole thing. And then when you can't, uh, you do not know what to do, basically. That yeah. is when the time that you need help. Okay, thank you. I, I think those are very, very good uh, pointers for our viewers. Um, if they they can they can gauge la, roughly like using these pointers, mm-hmm. whether to seek help or not. So thank you, Erin, so much mm-hmm. for that. Um, I think this this question is going to be uh, pretty good. Uh, what are the ways that you would recommend that we could take care of our mental health? especially in this pandemic. Yes. Um, get some support from your social circle. <laughs> that is very important. Yeah, yeah. True. With your friends, with your family, get some support. Mm-hmm. If you're feeling not well about yourself, you know, emotionally, mentally, get someone that you can trust to talk about that, to talk about your, your issue, basically. Mm-hmm. You know, don't put it under the rug and until it piles up, become something that is overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Second is reconnect with yourself. Listen to yourself. Look within yourself. What are you thinking? How do you feel? If possible, write a journal about it. Okay. It can it can be helpful though. I mean, mm. like you can look at the pattern. What actually that makes you feel in a certain way? What actually that makes you anxious? You know, you can you can take a look if there is any particular trigger about it, so that you can understand yourself better and you able to manage. Mm. Yeah, journaling, gratitude. I think in this time of hardship, is very important that we just take a moment to 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 be grateful for things that are uh, for the positive things that are happening, for the good things that are still present in our life. Mm. Yeah. This might not be the next thing that I'm going to say may not be something that many people would like, but I think it's very important is to spend less time on social media. Yes. <laughs> you know, nowadays, gadget is always on our hand, right? Correct. Right. You see, when this, this can trigger some kind of comparison, and that doesn't make that does not always makes us feel good. We we look at the struggle that we are that we are having, and what people post on their social media are all the happy ones, are all the good ones. Mm. How would that make you feel? Yes, that will, will make you feel terrible about yourself. Okay, so. Please spend less time on social media. You never know what they are going through, but those comparisons are just going to make you feel terrible. I I see. Connect with your feelings. Be mindful on how you feel. Acknowledge your feeling. Understand what makes you feel in that certain way. You know. And normalize it. It's okay to feel a certain emotion in a situation that you experience. It's okay to feel anxious. It's okay to feel afraid. It's okay because we are human. We have all these emotions in us. Yes, it's, 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 in, it's, it's something that is instinctive. You know, It's something that is natural. We are human, we have emotions, and that is fine, that is okay. Acknowledge that, and then try to understand what does it want. If you are feeling sad, then try to understand what makes me sad. You know, When you're feeling sad, you need some kind of comfort. Look for that source of comfort. Talk to people that can give you that comfort. 
friends, family, anyone, or maybe just a, a simple as as music, songs, I don't know, movie, mm. anything, a simple thing, but then give that needs, fulfill that emotional needs that you you have. Yeah. Take care of the physical health. Eat nutritious meal. It's a must. Staying active. Have a good rest. Yes. You know, have a take a rest. Allow yourself to take a rest when needed. When you know that you're tired, take a rest. Sometimes it just take one, two, three, or maybe five minutes to to just rest, and then after that you replenish yourself. You replenish all your energy. Know and listen to your body. Mm. I think that is the most thing. Yeah, balance your professional and personal life. Always, always remember to know when you are, cannot take it anymore. You need to rest. Then go ahead, have your personal life. You know, it's life is not always all about work. Correct. Yeah, there are more things to it. Yeah. And do a simple activity that can make you happy. You know, anything, a simple thing, just listen to music, reading books, anything. Entertain yourself, you know. Last but not least, I'll say uh, practice relaxation. Deep breathing, you know. Uh, body scan, try to scan whether there is any uh, uncomfortable feeling in your body. Do that and try to to kind of like give that kind of like a, a maybe a, a, just a gentle massage, you know, or stretching to, to loosen up. Mm. Deep breathing. Do you know how to do deep breathing, Joshua? Show me, Larry, how old are this is? <laughs> like... <laughs> Is it like that or? <laughs> ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so, deep breathing, huh? Mm. Okay. So, just one. Maybe you can put your uh, right hand on your uh, chest and left hand on your stomach, on your tummy. Yeah? And then, when you breathe in, exhale. Expand that stomach, you know, just make sure that you breathe using your belly, not using your chest. Okay. Breathe in, in count of four. Okay. Yes. Breathe in, in the count of four, hold for six. So 10 all together. Breathe in four, uh-huh. hold six, breathe out eight. So the breathe out must be longer. Oh, wait, 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 using your belly. <laughs> okay, how, how again, Eddie? <laughs> breathe in. Okay, breathe in. Breathe in in a count of four, yeah? Expand your stomach. One, two, three, four. Hold for six. Five, four, three, two, one. Let out using your mouth in a count of eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, that is that is, that <laughs> yeah. is nice, so, huh? Very relaxing. <laughs> yes. See, the relaxing is the the key is your breath out must be longer than your breath in. So you can do a variation. Yes. Breathe in four, hold six, breathe out eight. When you breathe out, also suck in your stomach. Make sure that you empty out that, that belly just now. So when I breathe in four, that means I hold the breath in for six, right? Yes. And then mm-hmm. I, when I'm re- releasing, I count to eight lah. So like one, yes. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm releasing the. Yes. Wow. Yes. Wow, this this so, is nice. <laughs> so that is the deep breathing. 
uh, is for relaxation. Good stuff. Very good stuff. Yeah, it's something that is just practical. I mean, like simple. Nice. You can do everywhere. You can do at any time. You know, it doesn't take a minute. It can help to calm down yourself. <laughs> Nice, lah. <laughs> How are you feeling now, Joshua? <laughs> yeah, it's quite, it's quite relaxing, lah. Seriously, like mm. nice. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. So something, something simple for you to do. Yeah. Ah, I think when we are talking about protecting our mental health, a message that I really, really want to share with everyone, even to. All my clients is always be kind to yourself and others. Mm. So everyone is struggling. You are struggling. I am struggling. We are struggling in our own way. Always be kind to yourself, especially. It's very easy for us to be kind to others, but not ourselves. Wow. You know, it's easy for us to say like. When when our friends say like oh I'm struggling with this and that, you now it's easy for us to say it's okay lah you know that's not a big thing, you will definitely get through it. But when you are the one who face that situation, what do you do? What do you say to yourself? Like deal with it and you know get over it as soon as possible kind of thing. Yeah, you don't yeah. even let yourself. To experience that sadness, mm. you sometimes some people even beat themselves up because how can I so stupid? How can I not doing it well? You know, it's already hard to deal with things at this moment. Mm. Why would mm. you want to beat yourself up from the inside too? Oh. Yeah, I think I really want to rem- remind this to everyone. Be kind to yourself. Others, slightly easy. Yourself, being kind to yourself, it's very hard. You see, the, the, the voices that is inside our mind is sometimes is negative. Mm. So be kind. We make mistakes. That's okay. Everyone make mistake. Everyone is. We are human. It's not. I mean, it's common to to make mistake. What mm. is big deal about it? We can fix it. You can fix it. Mm. There is. I mean, like. I. Just. Learn from it. Mm. You know. I. I no point of beating yourself up because you beat yourself up doesn't change the whole situation, doesn't change the mistake. Yeah, yeah. It just makes you feel more horrible, Mis- terrible about yourself. Yes, yes. yes. Yeah. So, I, always, so I, think, always, I think we all should just give ourselves space and just be kind lah, the next time, you know, yeah. anything happens. Yes. I think that I think those 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 be kind to yourself forwards, which is extremely hard to do. I believe for anybody, especially in this time, you know, it's such a red race, such a competition yeah. that you know if you slack a bit, you feel that you gotta get get back up fast, mm. but you don't realize that sometimes you just gotta pause, you gotta you gotta chill a bit, you gotta reflect. Um, yes. but like you said, be kind to yourself. And then uh, once you have dealt with it, and then you pick up the pieces and you start running again, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. When you pick up the pieces, you probably run faster because you have the energy. Wow. You know, because you have replenished those energy. Mm. You have replenished yourself. If you don't let the, if you don't let yourself to 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 experience that. You are just running on the empty battery. I see. You know? I see. There is no fuel. There is no fuel. Like I said, 
our mental health is the fuel, body mm-hmm. is the vehicle. I see. Yeah. Thanks, Erin. No, that's really good stuff. Yeah. Um, Erin, why do why do people still fear judgment when it comes to seeking help? <laughs> Oh, this is a stigma that we have yeah, yeah, yeah around yeah. mental health you know um, many of it coming from culture i believe mm. you know uh, fear of being seen or perceived as weak yep. you know, not capable of of dealing with stuff you know mm. not capable not strong enough to 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 move forward you know but everyone is different everyone has their own capacity and their um emotional responses is also different you know? so yeah so there is fear of this being weak the shame of their own situation there is also um, you know because what will people think of me if i go to seek mental health services right what will people how would people see me differently if i go for counseling or for therapy you no know, it's it's the the shame that they they bear on themselves mm. so that they, they are like uh, the shame of 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 uh, their own situation and then sometimes this is something that i notice as well that people uh, especially in in the in the asian yep. i guess uh, i mean like that family issue is supposed to be within the family and not to be talked to other people to stranger especially yes you know you don't bring out all these issues to 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 people outside of the family it's mm. it's seem to be something that is uh kind of like privacy confidential for the family and there are clients who are not um who are not willing to come for the for the therapy because their family are not supportive of that uh, mm. of them seeking help yes there are such situation as well um lack of understanding outside um about mental health mental health is often associated with those um crazy people you know especially in <laughs> well, in where i'm grow- growing up and also also something that i see in malaysia you know yeah uh, it's it's for the crazy you know it's for people who are severely uh this uh not functioning i think this is something that makes people afraid of if i go see a therapist how would people see me will people see me as a crazy person will people see me as this um not functional person you know as, as some, someone who is not well someone who is not mentally uh okay you know those fear more towards the shame and judgment that coming from other people um yeah and last but not least uh, that i can think of is you know seeking help from professional or mental health practitioners is equals to having a mental illness Mm. which not always the case right i think i have to highlight that in a uh, counseling or a therapy is could be beneficial for everyone even 
person who have just adjustment issue, you know, uh, having issues or difficulties to adjust to their new life circumstances. As simple as that. Or even someone who just want to understand themselves better. Mm. You know, it's not always about mental illness. It's not always about those crazy people, you know. Yep. There are so many misconceptions, I would say, about mental health in uh, our society. Also, um, Erin, like mm. for those um, that sometimes people just want to speak to somebody, they feel they yeah. cannot relate to anybody else and they mm. have a lot of stuff inside. And they feel like I can't talk to family or I can't talk to my friends about whatever I'm facing. But mm. a good um, option is to speak to people like you, right, Erin? Yes, yes. You know, um, this is what I hear uh, from from some people and also something that I, that I encountered myself mm. is that It's just to need someone to listen to you objectively yeah. and in non-judgmental. Yes. You talk to your friends, they give you advices, they talk, they, they see it from their own perspective. They yes. see it from their own judgment. And they try to give advices which may not work for the person. Because the whole situation is only that person can assess and look for the answer. Advices from someone else may might become a guidance, may work, may not work, because those people who give advices may not necessarily know the whole thing, may not necessarily know how the person feels about the situation. Mm. So I would like to highlight that. Sometimes they just want to have someone to be there for them, support them in a non-judgmental manner. Yeah. And... While we are at these questions, I would also like to to say this. Really, I think this is for everyone. Uh, for everyone who wanting to to seek therapy or who are seeking therapy, that they are a very courageous person. You see, Joshua, uh, when you are having a wound, right? Would you, would you dare to open up that emotional wound in the first place? No, there is a reason why you put it under the carpet, under the rug. There is a reason why you avoid that because it's so much pain. And people who go to who go see therapists are those people who are courageous enough to open that wound and work on that issue. It's not easy. It's truly, there are a lot of emotional uh, intensity happening during that time, you know, when they when they talk about their situation, when they open up their wound, and when they open up to their really and try to to, to heal that. Mm. Not easy at all. I really admire and I would like to say that they are very courageous to do that. Amazing, mm. amazing. Yes. They're amazing, isn't it? Yeah. And you see how much they have changed after they address that wound. You mm. see how much they have totally shift their perspective, uh, their perspective about themselves. Once they understand, ah, this is what is happening, 
And when the wound heal, they become, they transform into a better person, a more adaptive person, mm-hmm. who is amazing, really. So I really tell that those people who seek help are the, the most courageous one. Wow. Oh. My God. <laughs> I feel like you're speaking into my soul, Irene. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, that is. Listen, guys, that's such brilliant advice. Please seek help if you need to speak to somebody. And uh, Erin is available. I think uh, just from the session alone, I think you guys can already see how much <laughs> it can help you. So please seek help. <laughs> All right, bring brings me to my next yeah. question, Erin. So yes, let's say right. so let's say mm. now um our viewers lah since they watch this talk mm. they, they they want to seek help mm. so um this is something that i get confused about sometimes so like do mm. i go to a counselor do i go to a psychologist or do i go to a psychiatrist how do you mm. differentiate and um yeah maybe a little bit about that eh Right. Okay. So, um, for counselor for mm. psychotherapies, uh, our main modality or tools is talk therapy. Basically, you talk about your issues, and your he- we are healing that through through the conversation. We are working on it through a conversation. Yeah. Mm. Um, letting the person to have that safe space that for them to express their concern and explore their concern in depth unfortunately we are not qualified to diagnose any mental dis- any mental disorder now we are not qualified at all mm. psychotherapists or counselor are not qualified um psychologists on the other hand clinical psychologists they are qualified to diagnose and they are able to provide therapy mm. yeah okay however they are trained more into case management which is more diagnosing and and more like focus on uh, on on the the diagnosis on and helping on that situation on that specific diagnosis. Um, psychiatrist, on the other hand, is coming from a medical doctor background. Mm. So they are basically doctors who specialize in psychiatry. Okay. So they they are able to quali- uh, sorry, they're able to diagnose you. They're qualified to diagnose you because they're doctors. And that's what they do. And also, their main tools is re, uh, medication. Okay. Very rare on talking therapy. Mm. Usually, the psychiatrists are um, the one who provide the, the medication. But the therapy is... Uh, working along with another therapist to provide the therapy for the clients. Okay. Yeah. So it's mainly they are what they do is just prescription. Uh, they're giving medication. Okay. Yeah. So th- the differences are those. Mm. Um, I guess to some extent, if you, I mean, like, if, if, The cases also kind of like different. Uh, psychiatrists usually are the most like, severe cases. Yep. Um, yeah. So okay. that is that is really need the the, the medication. Okay. So you, can I safely say that based on the severity of the of the case, you pick which person mm-hmm. you want to see. Let's say you just want to talk to somebody, then you you can speak to a counselor. And, um and then mm-hmm. like uh, the next level is a psychologist like that Erin? 
Yeah. Okay. Yeah, All right. I, um, any 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 to practice? add on? Ah, sorry. Sorry. Uh, just a little bit something that I want to add on is um, first know what is your reason for coming to seek help. Mm. Are you looking for some kind of emotional support? Are you looking for official diagnosis? Okay. Are you looking for medication? You know, mm. then you can based on that. If you're looking for uh, support, then psychologist or counselor or therapist are the person that you can go to. If you're looking for diagnosis, you can go to clinical psychologist or psychiatrist. If you need medication, then you go to uh, psychiatrist. And as you say, based on the severity of the mental health condition, how severe, if it is severe, it may be out of the counselor or therapist capability to help you. Then you might need to look for clinical psychologist or a psychotherapist, uh, sorry, or a psychiatrist. Okay. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And the cases, I'll say... Uh, those mental health cases for psychiatrists usually are those like, a, I would say the severe, as in like significant impairment in, in mm -hmm. functioning, you know, um, <clears throat> that requires medication. Like for example, if we are talking about schizophrenia, if we are talking about personality disorder, if we are looking at uh, psychosis, uh, then it's best to look for psychiatrist, not um, counselor or psychotherapist. Okay. Okay. Wow. Thanks. Thanks for that, Erin. I think that that will be very beneficial. Um, I mean, it's very beneficial for me, so I believe it will be very beneficial to the people that are watching as well or listening um okay erin how do we contact you if let's say we want to get in touch if someone wants to speak to you and all that in uh maybe you can share a little bit about how we can get in touch with you uh, or your company or uh, the organization you're working for or the one that you co-founded um how mm. can we get in touch with you oh you can uh contact me uh under the the empowerment group okay yeah the email is teg.empowerment.my at gmail.com okay or uh, you can contact directly to me via whatsapp um, at 6014-2264672 uh, yeah so okay. those are the, the, the contacts that you can uh, save if you would like to see me, if you would like to, to talk to me about yeah, any questions that you have. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Thanks, Harry. So the information is will be available at the bottom of your screen. So you guys can check it out and please get in touch with Erin. Um, guys, just want to say like, if you guys, after watching this video, if you feel the 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 you feel triggered or you feel the nudge to to reach out for help please please step out and do it guys because uh mental health is extremely important especially uh during this pandemic and uh we just want to tell you that we tremendously love everybody and we just want to um extend help and uh, Erin is here. I mean, um, thank you so much, Erin, for being here, taking time off to be with us and to share all these such valuable information and being on this platform. So, guys, please, please um, reach out for help. And also, if you need any prayer support, um, we are also always available. Send us a message or um, if you need anything, just uh, email uh, the courage catalog at gmail.com again all the information will be down and uh, either you can if you want to speak to Erin you want to go through us we can always uh, uh, hook you up with Erin or if you just want like prayer support and just want someone to pray for you and we are also always there 
So, um, Erin, any last words? Final advice. The advice of advices. <laughs> the advice of advices. Uh, the 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 highlight lah. I mean, the whole conversation has been a highlight lah. But yeah, anything, anything you wanna add? Final. Um, I think something else that I would like to share is something that is, I would say, it's it's uh, dear to me also is that you know if you can be kind to other people, try to extend that kindness to yourself. Mm-hmm. So take care of that person emotionally, physically, mentally. Be kind to this person that you are. No matter what, you are the the one who is. Uh, I say you you are the the only person that can be you. No one else can be. So do not compare yourself to others. To everyone has different circumstances. Your journey is unique, and that is yours for you to to live. So. No point of comparing yourself to other people. If you need help, get help. If you do not want, if you don't think that you need help, then be kind to yourself. Listen to yourself. Yep. I think that's all, Joshua. Thank you so much for inviting me, Joshua, in this platform. Yeah. Is a courage catalog. I <laughs> hope this can be helpful for everyone and encourage. The courage that is yeah. within everyone to be more purposeful and meaningful uh, in their own life. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Erin, and uh, thank you for being on the platform. And again, it's such a pleasure and privilege. Um, and guys, again, please seek help. Please reach out. And yeah. I think Erin, thank you so much for being on this show today, and I believe that this will be very, very useful to a lot of people. So thank you again, Erin. God bless you, and uh, mm-hmm. yep, we'll see you soon. Maybe for okay. another, another podcast. <laughs> yes, it will be my pleasure. <laughs> okay, thank bye, you. bye. Have a good day.